Setup tour. Please, can we have the setup tour? Can we see your setup? That's what people have been asking for the last few weeks and months. And in all honesty, it's not necessarily something I've wanted to do, just because I, I don't really feel like my setup is kind of ready for prime time. But you asked for it, so you're going to get it. Here is the setup tour early. 2016. So let's start off with everything you can see in shot right now, starting with the computer and the monitors. Uh, the computer is the Skylake build, so this is uh, the full, exactly pretty much the same as it was in the Skylake build guide videos. So it's got uh, two GTX 980s in SLI, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum RAM running at 3000 megahertz. Uh, we have two ROG Swifts as well. We've got the 4K and then the 165 1440p versions. Unfortunately, those have got to go back, and so as you'll see from a second, that means I've got to go over to the monitor graveyard to pull out a different one while we're waiting for some more to test. And I think overall the setup is really good from a performance point of view. Uh, I need to work on some cable management and things like that, uh, but we're going to be building a whole new studio in the next couple of months. Uh, I've got some stands ready for things like that, and I just haven't really been able to spend as much time getting this set up uh, as good as I would like it, mainly because there's not really that much point when I'm moving out in a couple of months anyway. But rather than talking about what will come, let's talk about everything else. Um, the keyboard and mouse. Um, so this here I've been using for, God, about three years now, and that is the Cooler Master Quickfire TK. And this has been tried to be bettered, if you like, by different keyboards that have come in as review samples, including the Corsair K70 RGB, which I think on the whole is a better keyboard. But for gaming, I prefer the key caps of this uh, particular keyboard. I just think that the whole uh, smoothness of them when you press them feel a lot more um, sort of, oh, I don't know how to explain it, they just feel better. Obviously it uses Cherry MX Red switches, the same as the Corsair K70 RGB. I just basically prefer the feel of uh, the key caps themselves, as well as obviously having the benefit of the Cherry MX Reds. Very good keyboard and hoping to sort of review some more um, and maybe get it bettered. Uh, mouse, uh, this is the Corsair M65, again this is about three years old. and while these peripherals will change depending on what I'm reviewing, I sort of like to keep uh, my personal setup as free as possible when I'm not testing things. And the Corsair M65 for me is a mouse that I guess I couldn't really give a fair review to these days and is a reason why you may not see ever a review of a Corsair M65 because I've been using it for three years and I'm so used to it and I really love it. I find that the sniper button makes things so much easier um, when you're playing any sort of game, even if it's... Uh, uh, something Twitch based or even if it's just something like Civilization 5 or something like that uh, just having the option to lower your DPI uh, at uh, buttons press uh, makes things a little bit easier but I'm always up for changing things but to be honest uh, this is the main things that I use on a day to day basis microphone um, the one I'm filming on uh, recording with at the moment is a Rode video mic which is a pretty good all-in-one mic if you like solution uh, hoping to move away from that to something a bit more professional in the future uh, but that is the Rode video mic that you're hearing now this thing right here is the Blue Yeti and uh, this isn't the pro version this is just the standard version and for all the voiceovers and things that you will sort of hear I was going to say C, but obviously it's more here, uh, then that is recorded with that. And it's a very good looking microphone, it's very easy to set up, you don't really need to do anything, literally just plug it in, and the high quality recordings are pretty good. It's let down by the fact that it has a desk stand though, and this does pick up some noise if you don't have something like this Corsair mouse mat uh, to sort of pick up some of the vibrations. And of course it depends on the PC you're using as well. But I think a common problem a lot of people probably have is that they probably put their computer on their desk, and then they have a desk microphone like this, and then it picks up all the vibrations from your PC case. Uh, if you want to avoid this, obviously you can use a microphone stand, or if you really want to use a desk stand like this, have fans on a lower setting, and if you take things like hard drives and replace them with SSDs, you're going to reduce vibrations, but obviously the smart money would be just to get a better stand. Um, need to replace this, this is just the bog standard Xbox 360 controller that I've actually had from my Xbox 360 days. Rather than buy a plain charge kit, 
Um, I just use some rechargeable AA batteries. Um, it's still a bit of a rubbish solution and the PS4 control is better, but I just find that this has better support for the majority of PC games. So I've got that with the wireless adapter. Um, moving over to some of the camera equipment, uh, we're filming on a Canon 7D Mark II at the moment, which is a very good all-round camera for me, it's the reason I bought it, not just for video, it's very good for sports photography, wildlife photography and things like that as well. Uh, moving forward, might look to sort of use uh, something else, but as you can hopefully tell, uh, the image quality is actually pretty good. Lens collection, uh, this is the big daddy. Uh, this I was quite fortunate enough to actually uh, sort of buy off of a friend. Uh, for £1,000, but traditionally you, this costs at least £1,600, and it's basically a 70 to 200, so a long lens that I use for all my close up shots pretty much. Um, it goes down to f2.8 and it has image stabilization, which means getting smooth shots is very easy. Very expensive, by no means required, but if you're someone that's very interested in photography or really wants the best shots, this is a very good lens to have in your collection. Moving on to this, don't use this as often. This is uh, the EFS 10 to 22 millimeter, and then this is a wide angle, or more of an ultra wide angle. Um, this is an EFS lens, so it's not really that much of a professional lens, because uh, it is used on Canon crop sensor bodies, which basically means that if you have a higher end full frame camera, you won't be able to use it, but that's how I get the super wide shots. Um, and then we have a 50 millimeter 1.4, which is good, but for filming, I'm looking to move to a 35 millimeter prime with image stabilization in the future. The one we're using at the moment to film on is a Canon 24 to 105 L lens. Uh, the tripod as well is a Manfrotto uh, 055, and it uses a video head. I can't remember the exact name of the video head, but that's how I have moved to get smoother shots, and any shots from about maybe four or five weeks ago um, since have now used this new tripod, and it makes things a hell of a lot easier. It's a very good tripod. Um, webcam is just a bog standard, cheap, nasty Logitech HD 720p webcam. I don't even know. Uh, the model name name of that, I don't think it's that relevant. Um, I haven't really tended to sort of look at webcams that all that seriously, uh, but I do use them for the casual play videos. Lighting under the desk is pretty cool though, um, and you'll see from hopefully from the B-roll, but for $17.99, and I'll leave the link to everything, but especially the LEDs in the description below, for £17.99 or whatever it was I paid for it, you basically get RGB LEDs, so they can go to any colour you like, or they can fade in and out if you really want. Uh, if I can press the button properly, there you go, and then it will change to any colour you like, um, if white or whatever you want. And obviously it's only an aesthetic change, but I got them mainly because when I'm doing filming I think it will make the shots look more interesting. But I have some similar at home and they are actually quite good. In the evening, if you say you want to watch a film and you can have some light, uh, coming under your desk and sort of reducing eye strain. Uh, well, at least that's the way I see it anyway, but pretty cool nonetheless. Now, we're going to have to change angle of shot to show you some of the other stuff. And welcome to the monitor graveyard. So this is where monitors will sort of go uh, once they've either had their time and are waiting to go back, or if I just basically uh, don't hear anything, they sort of live here. At the moment, there's only one monitor um, that I own personally that I use. And this is this one right here, the my trusty BenQ 120Hz. Can't even remember the model name now because this was about three years old. Uh, it's just a bog standard TN 1080p 120Hz monitor, very cutting edge at the time and still produces really nice smooth gameplay for something like Call of Duty Black Ops. So if I want to play Call of Duty and I don't have a better monitor in for review, that's the one I will go for. And it also houses uh, these headphones as well, actually. Uh, so I've got these in for review, and these are the Corsair Void wireless RGB headset. Uh, spoiler alert, it's basically the same as the USB version, but wireless. Um, so what does that mean? I don't even think I'll probably end up doing a review. I think I'll do a video on wireless versus wired headphones because otherwise I'm just going to say, well, they sound pretty much the same uh, with a little bit of static because it's wireless, but it's wireless. That's not really that much of an interesting video. So I'll probably do a separate video all about headphones. Uh, but yes, I do use the BenQ monitor on a day-to-day -day basis because it has a headphone stand on the back, which is brilliant. This thing right here is the FreeSync. Uh, it's basically the FreeSync cousin of the X34 Predator. Can't remember the name. It's like the X. Is it the X? 
F or I can't remember. Uh, but I'll leave the model number here somewhere. Uh, but it's the 85 hertz if you overclock it. Uh, FreeSync 34 inch Acer IPS 3440 by 1440 curved display. Very nice display. Uh, but as I'm playing some more Twitch based games, I'm not using it at the moment. That may have to go back in the future, but I haven't heard anything just yet. Um, you don't normally get to keep these things, so that would be quite an oddity. Uh, but I'm not going to shout and scream about sending it back for obvious reasons. Uh, but yeah, that's a very good monitor. And uh, if you have a FreeSync card, then a FreeSync card, an AMD card, then obviously you can going to be able to use the FreeSync in that. And that's the monitor graveyard. Um, I have my glasses and my headphones and things like there as well. Uh, but not really anything else that interesting. The very last thing to mention is the 4K TV uh, that is over there. This room is just way too cramped to actually get you a proper shot with me in it, so you'll just have to work with the overlay, I'm afraid. Uh, but this is a 4K TV that's hooked up via HDMI 2.0 to the Skylake build, and it's a very good TV, and I really should use it more than I do. I tend to use it more just for watching YouTube videos than anything else. Uh, it's just, I think the main problem is, if you're trying to build a setup, uh, then you need a nice big space to do it. And to put this into perspective, this room is probably what? Uh, I no, I have no idea. I was going to say maybe about 25 meters squared, but I've realized I've completely made that up. So I literally have no idea if that's accurate. But to put it in perspective, I've basically managed to uh, get a double bed in here, uh, wardrobe, cupboard, um, and then a tiny bit of walking space and not really anything else. And so it's okay for if you don't have a computer set up on a big TV, as soon as you put that in there, it just is sort of asking for trouble. Um, so the real big news, I guess, is that while this setup is adequate for me to work in, it's not really adequate for me to film in, which is why I'm building the PC-centric studio uh, a bit later in the summer. And this is going to be quite exciting because it's a whole new desk, and then it's going to have all this cool... Uh, speaker setup, LEDs in there, uh, new peripherals, new monitors, new everything, and it's basically going to actually be a studio rather than a bedroom used as a studio, and that's hopefully going to be the biggest change really for PC centric that we've had in a long time. It should make videos look a lot better, and yes, I know things here aren't necessarily as good as they can be. I'm not saying the equipment's not good because that's obviously be honest. Uh, having these two monitors uh, next to each other are probably two of the best monitors you can buy. So I don't mean like that. I just mean that, yes, the cable management is a bit rubbish. Uh, it's not the cleanest setup. The room space isn't very good. The lighting could be better. All of that stuff. Um, that's sort of why I wasn't necessarily going to do this video, but it's kind of only fair that I show you what's going on. So this is more of my test arena, if you like, where I'm testing stuff out, uh, ready for review, and then I drive it all the way to the studio and get the filming done there. So a couple of eagle-eyed viewers managed to spot that in uh, one of the G-Sync monitor reviews. G-Sync wasn't enabled when I was obviously doing filming because I was running that off an a AMD card. Very clever, and, I'm, and it's quite quite good that ma people managed to spot that. Obviously, it makes no difference to this footage at all because you wouldn't be able to see G-Sync anyway, but it is quite interesting nonetheless. So let me know what you think of this setup. Um, is it good? Is it bad? Uh, are you sort of uh, face palming at the cable management and things like that? Uh, but yeah, no, please let me know and I'll sort of leave as many links as I can in the description below to let you know what's going on. But I want you guys to be involved and there'll be a series of proper videos leading up to it. Uh, but in what's going to be the PC-centric studio, what things should be in there? Keyboards, mice, uh, lenses, I don't know, microphones, monitors, all of that stuff. I want that to sort of be a little bit interactive. I don't want to just be showing you what I've got. I want to have a series working towards uh, getting the best stuff in. So when we do reviews or when we do showcases and things like that, you can suggest things uh, that might be good or better alternatives. So do let me know what you think. Uh, if you have just seen this video, then don't forget to subscribe um, if you haven't already. Uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. And if you want to know more um, about me, I guess, um, then please follow at PC Centric on Twitter, and then you can sort of get the day-to-day -day antics. Same with Snapchat and Instagram, it's just PC Centric on both. So, thank you so much for checking out this video, as always, and I'll see you in the next one.